A large share of the world poverty is in Sub-Saharan Africa. And so as a social scientist, since the beginning of my studying, I thought that this was an area where applying some of our knowledge, applying some of the advancements of economics and applied economics could lead to large benefits. I think that as a researcher, we need to communicate to a wide audience the importance of what we do. And in particular, we need to explain that the results that we provide with our studies, with our evaluations, can inform policy making. I would hope that in the next few years, next few decades, local researchers can use the methods and the knowledge that they acquire in cooperation with researchers from other countries, not just transfer of information and knowledge from the north to the south, but also from the south to the north. There are at least two key steps that I see for the future. One, becoming even better in communicating the results of research to a broad audience of policymakers and development practitioners. Second, making an even stronger effort in involving local researchers in these evaluation activities. I think that the University of Zurich has made tremendous progress in becoming a top player, a frontier player, in the study of development economics. I started working on economics from a perspective of how low- and middle-income countries can improve their public policies. I work with governments, institutions, with tax authorities, uh, with public agencies, but also with large firms where we do research together on very concrete questions. In economics, we have new methods nowadays where we can really study concretely how public policies work and specific ways to improve them. Tax collection is a very challenging task for any government. We currently work on a project with the Chilean Tax Authority where we study whether the measures that the OECD has introduced to reduce tax shifting by multinational corporations are effective. I was born in the right family, with the right access. It made a huge difference to me, that, but uh, not all children had the same luck as I did back then. And this is unfair. So a huge motivation for my work is to try to make these basic opportunities less and equal, such that regardless of where you're born or what your gender is, the color of your skin, you should have access to the same um, future in fulfilling your potential as a human being. You know, we're currently testing things based on what works on average. But the truth is, every kid is different. And in the modern world, we're talking more and more about how artificial intelligence will help you know, customize the approach to every child. This can also be done in poor countries. You only have to be smart about what technologies you use, how you collect data. And now, you know, things like these harmful social norms, child marriage, uh, female labor participation, these are now, you know, core issues that economists are discussing. So maybe they relabel things and they don't call it human rights, but they call it economic opportunities. Great. There's more people thinking about those issues and we're trying to look at them at a, from a different angle because of the different way that we look at the problem. <laughs>